Hi, I love the Ravens and being able to share my relationship with them. Sometimes I get questions that require rather long explanations, especially in the field. One is this idea that birds evolved from reptiles or dinosaurs. I can give you my thoughts on the matter, but in the end, you kind of have to decide what you want to believe yourself. The first major problem I see involves scales becoming feathers. A reptile scales covers the animal's entire body, and it sheds the whole thing at one time. Birds have a very different, soft, pliable skin. It manufactures feathers of many different sizes, shapes, and densities. Their feathers don't cover the entire body, for there's both a beak and legs, which look like scales, but are actually very different. Each and every feather, from the long flight feathers on the wings to the soft white down, is unique to the one right next to it. So here's a flight feather. It's attached to a shaft. There are barbs, and then we see smaller barbules. At about a thousand times magnification, you see flight feathers have a unique ziplock feature. On each side of the barbule is very smooth. On the other side, they have these micro miniature hooks that grab and hold. They line up so perfectly, they lock so tight that they can insulate from extreme cold and they can even be waterproof. A bird zips them up and zips them open to either close them for cleaning or open them while it's preening. How could a cell have both developed and learned to manufacture such an amazing feature? Remember, a feather is not a living thing. It's manufactured. Now think about this. You not only have separate genetic codes for each and every feather, but also the ability to have all these millions of little hooks and barbs that line up absolutely perfectly on one side of every barbule of every single feather. This is a massive engineering challenge for any intelligent human being to even produce something like this when making things of plastic or metal. It seems to me to be way beyond nature's blind tinkering. And thus far, this is about all science can even begin to speculate on. First, a scale changed into this little bump, but there are no transitions. Next, the bump made some sort of little follicle, but how? There are no transitions, and even if this was a transition, any creature that had these worthless little bumps and even these more worthless little follicles all over its body would not make it in the wild. Next, the follicle magically splits and becomes this. Well, what is this? Maybe it's some sort of down-like feather. And how and why did it split? More importantly, how would the genes receive and then pass on those properties of its splitting? Here again, there are no transitions. Then they claim this to this, with somehow a shaft magically running up the middle. Here again, no transitions and no record of how the genes could possibly record this additional shaft, let alone all the splits for all the barbs. And then somehow the barbs magically split yet again, making barbules. And one side of the barbules are perfectly smooth, and the other side somehow develops millions of micro miniature hooklets. To me, this scientific story not only ignores the many, many steps needed in between each of their proposed stages, it asks me to overlook properties about genetic engineering that is by all scientific experimentation completely impossible. So to me, it's obvious feathers are truly outstandingly complex. And I've seen nothing that would make me believe feathers could have in any way, shape or form evolve from scales. Feathers are just one problem. Second, I have a similar problem with one-way lungs and air sacs. Again, there are no transitions between a two-way lung system and a one-way lung system with air sacs. How could it possibly evolve through the many stages where many of the parts would be completely useless until the whole system was all working together all at the same time? None of the intermediate stages would survive. If you could find different, please share, because I would love to be enlightened on this. Third, there's the massive breast muscles needed for flight. <laughs> Bodybuilders do not pass their massive muscles down to their young, and neither would a dinosaur flapping pass its larger muscles on to its young. All our science demonstrates genetics don't work that way. My fourth problem, birds have legs covered by scutes, which are different from a reptile's scales. Remember, reptiles shed their skin in one sheet. A bird does not shed its scutes. A bird's legs allow them to stand in freezing water and snow. 
Reptile scales would not protect, and they would freeze. A bird's brain. I predicted long ago that one day science would find something unique about a raven's brain. <laughs> they were just way too smart for brain size to have anything to do with intelligence. That's why I believe brain size, which was another question I got in the field, has little to do with intelligence. As we know by our own information storage system, it's not the size but capacity that matters. Sure enough, in 2016 it was shown a raven's brain is denser and has more tightly packed neurons than most other animals, even chimps. Please tell me how a blind process could learn to pack in far more neurons. There's a massive difference between a lizard or a dinosaur's brain and a bird's brain. In addition, all through history, bird tracks were reported in birth, permian, and triassic layers. That's long before reptiles and dinosaurs. Scientists address this issue four ways. First, they label the tracks by aves or proto-aves. So by the track alone, they assume a bird didn't make it. Instead, they claim some non-existent proto-ghost, of which there is absolutely no evidence for, made the track. Come on, is that science? Second, they don't address them. They, they just ignore them. That's all there is to it. Three, they call them problematic. And in case you don't know what that means, that's kind of science lingo for, Houston, we have a problem, but I'm certainly not going to try to explain it. Just like my bear tracks in the Permian that were found in New Mexico, scientists have done nothing about it. They haven't refuted it. They haven't gone out to take a look at them. They've just ignored them and called them problematic. They also found birds in that Permian soil also. Four, they claim Indians carved them. Now, I've seen some of these, and all I can say is, wow, uh, these Indians must have been pretty skilled at carving into some pretty hard stone. So, today, scientists have no choice but to finally admit we have fully flying feather birds like flamingos, seagulls, avocets, owls, parrots, and many more that are found buried with the dinosaurs in many Cretaceous layers. <laughs> I wonder why your museums don't display them that way. If you doubt what is claimed here, I challenge you, do some online research and dig deep. You will find full flying birds equal to modern birds buried with T-Rex and many other dinosaurs. I find it strange that a few people can look at a few creatures that have some shared minor characteristics like bones or hip construction and then claim that they share a common ancestor that doesn't exist anywhere in the real world. So I can see a few surface similarities, but when I look closely at the details, birds and the dinosaurs are worlds apart. I found nothing scientific that demonstrates warm-blooded birds could have evolved from cold-blooded reptiles or dinosaurs, or that they could possibly share an ancestor that could have given such widely different physical attributes. Even in the fossil record, all these animals are either a mosaic with a few fully developed shared characteristics, or they are a dinosaur, or they are a full flying bird. There is nothing in the fossil record that can be considered an ancestor to both the dinosaur and the bird, nor are there any transition of one becoming another. My simple understanding of genetics and science tells me if birds really came from dinosaurs, that the step-by-step -step theory of Darwin says there would not only be transitions, but that there would be many of them, and there should also be a lot of failures. My simple conclusion is everything I've seen and heard in even in the most trusted scientific journals, birds are completely unique and the dino to bird bit is all wishful speculation. I will say it makes a great story and it sells some really fun books. It makes the movies very entertaining. It may even get a many scientists scrap monies, but I'm betting one day we're all going to realize it's just science fiction and talk.